What is up, guys? Priscilla Williams, aka the School Fester, here to educate you on health, fitness, social well being. Hope you all had a Merry Christmas. Hope you're having a Happy New Year's, whatever holidays you celebrate around this time. Hope you've been enjoying it with friends and family. Today, guys, I'm going to be releasing the first. Uh, you know, free program, full body style video, and this one is going to be for beginners. For those of you who don't know, about maybe two or three videos ago, I pretty much you know explained how I know a lot of you guys um, originally found me, or even some of your newer subs, a lot of newer subs that found me through like you know my full body videos, like you know my top seven reasons for training full body, um, my uh, you know or my full, old full body concurrent programming that I used to do, like they found me through that, or even those who've been watching my most recent videos know that hey, he's a powerlifter. But he's doing like you know SPD days and then like you know full body style accessory days. So a lot of you have been having a lot of questions about full body. So I thought, what better way to kick off the year than to kind of just you know release a full um, you know a bunch of different like kind of full body templates. Uh, nothing fancy, just simple, straightforward things to kind of help you guys depending on where you're at. So this one's going to be a full body video for beginners. Then the next video that we do in the series will be over full body for intermediate lifters. Then we're going to have full body that focuses more towards, you know, hypertrophy or like, you know, weak point muscle group specializations. And then we're going to have people that focus more on full body for um, max body strength training or those who are trying to transition into power lifting, even though we don't have strength and hypertrophy go hand in hand. Just when you're trying to kind of focus or specialize more on one than the other, we're going to be do a heavy full body style videos that pretty much just cover all of that guys but like i said this one's going to be for the beginners now in the description down below i'm going to have different videos i've done in the past that are really important for beginners like you know the top uh like you know if i was to think beginners make uh, my go-to movements for you know strength and and muscle mass just different videos like that that will kind of give you a little bit more insight into why these days are set up the way they are even though i will be going over that in this video and just giving you kind of like you know a little bit more explanation hopefully for something uh to answer some of the questions that I'm sure you guys will have over like why things are set up the way that they are. But with that being said, let's kind of get right into it. Once again, those videos will be in the description down below. Um, the free, you know, set up template program, everything that I'm talking about will be in the description down below. It's not a fancy Excel file or anything like that. I keep that reserved for my actual clients, but it's a free program, guys. Don't complain. Let's get right into it. So for beginners, guys, the main thing that we're going to be focusing on is getting strong on like our just different essential movement patterns. So we're going to be focusing on like, you know, horizontal pressing, vertical pressing, um, vertical pulling, horizontal pulling, we're going to be focusing on like squat based movements, hinges, that's pretty much what the basis of what we're trying to do is getting stronger on those big compound movements because as you get stronger you will build muscle and as you build muscle you get stronger to go hand in hand and that is most true for beginners especially. As you become more intermediate and advanced, yeah you can kind of specialize more on one or the other even though they still go hand in hand but as a beginner if you're like hey man I'm trying to get really really jacked then you need to be trying to get really really strong. If you're trying to get really really strong then you need to be trying to get really really jacked and like I said the video subscription down below will kind of be going over all that but let's get right into it. So to start off this is a three times a week full body um, workout uh, for beginners that you can pretty much really you should be able to run this for at least a year especially like you know truly a beginner brand new to the gym brand new lifting weights everything like that and uh you either want to run it monday wednesday friday or tuesday thursday saturday so i'm just going to be kind of going through each day what the movements are what the set and rep scheme is and then at the end i'll be explaining like how you guys are actually going to progress um from week to week with this programming so getting started with day one guys what we're going to be doing is starting off with squats for four sets of five. After that, you're going to have bench press for four sets of five, barbell rows for three sets of eight, tricep press downs for three sets of ten, and then strict barbell curls for three sets of ten. Now, some of these movements can be replaced. Some of them I wouldn't want you to, but I'm just kind of giving you an example of like what we're doing. So starting off with the squats, it's just going to be like you know, our squat based primary leg movement. Now, you're going to notice that even though I may say, oh, this is a leg movement or chest movement, all of these like main movements, like the first three of each day, are big compound movements. So when we're squatting, yeah, we're definitely, you know, the primary movements are like you know, the quads, but you're also getting work on your hamstrings, your glutes, your back. The squat is definitely like a full body style movement, right? But it's going to be your primary um, leg movement for developing the lower body along with deadlifts, which we'll talk about when we get to day two. So the first thing you're going to start off with squats is four sets of five. Now, if you absolutely, for whatever reason, or excuse, just do not refuse to or cannot squat. You can replace the squat with something like um, a machine-based squat, whether it's a hack squat or a leg press. You just want something that's going to be your primary, um, your primary like quad-dominated leg exercise. But we want to go with the squats for four sets of five. After that, we have the bench press. This is going to be our main horizontal press. Once again, if for whatever reason you don't want to bench press, or maybe you're not interested in doing the barbell bench press, maybe you want to replace this with dumbbell bench press or maybe you want to place this with like a chest press machine that is your leisure that's up to you but for the sake of what we're doing with the programming and just think about the movements that are going to give us the most bang for our buck and put on the most mass we want to focus on 
the, the bench press. Now, another option or something that's also really good for this would be the weighted dips. I'll talk about that more in the intermediate programming, but the movements that I'm picking are things that most people should be able to do and movements that I think everybody should be doing. So, squats for four sets of five, bench press for four sets of five, then you have the barbell row, just the normal bent over barbell row for three sets of eight. If you already are able to and know how to do pin lay rows and you wanna go with that for your three sets of eight, by all means go for it. Some some people don't necessarily have um, the mobility to get into the position for the pin lay row just quite yet or their forms can be really sloppy with it. So the bent over barbell row is a little bit simpler. Once again, movement that I feel most people are able to do starting off. So the reason that we are going guys with four sets of five on the squat and bench, for example, is simply because from what I've tested with, you know, different clients over like, you know, um, just being a personal trainer, both in the gym and then even, you know, with the online coaching as well, is that different people, you know, even as beginners have different levels of work capacity, but for some people, three sets of five just isn't quite enough workload or volume. It's not that they aren't going to see benefits or progress from, because if you're a beginner, you're going to see progress from pretty much almost anything you're doing as long as you're progressively overloading. But the reality is, is they can probably just get away with doing a little bit more. Whereas I've actually seen with five sets of five, there's some people who like, that seems to be really hard on them like to um, progress and recover. Some people just genetically don't have very good work capacities, but four sets of five seems to be kind of like, you know, just that sweet spot that I think kind of works for everybody. As you get, as you start doing this, if you find that you do better with like three sets of five for your recovery, go for it. If you want to push for five sets of five, go for it. But as far as what I'm just giving you guys for, for this example template, four sets of five on the squat and the bench press. Now, the reason the barbell row is going to be three sets of eight is just to give you a little bit more volume on the, uh, on the uh, on your back movements, on your posterior chain. That's something that I feel like a lot of beginners slack on. They'll go in there and it used to be like a lot of beginners slack on legs, but now I feel like, you know, that's such an unpopular thing to do. A lot of beginners, you know, they'll go in those squat, their bench press, but they kind of slack hard on their back accessory movements. And guys, you want a strong back. Your back is going to help you with just lifting in general and strength in general, but also just the appearance of looking fuller, looking more jacked. And beyond that, it's gonna be, it's gonna help you in your other movements. A stronger back's gonna help you with the bench press, gonna help you with the squats, gonna help you with the deadlift. You wanna have a strong posterior chain. So three sets of eight just to give you a little bit more volume and to let you actually work on the movement a little bit more, just because a lot of people really suck at like, you know, properly protracting and retracting. So I think having a little bit more like, you know, rep work with that is beneficial because that's why the barbell row is three sets of eight. Now, after that, we have our two um, accessory movements or isolation movements for the day. That's going to be the tricep press downs for three sets of 10 and then barbell curls for three sets of 10. Now, technically speaking, um, if you're doing, especially as a beginner, if you're doing sufficient workload on your compound movements, you're probably not gonna see that much, if any really additional growth from, um, isolating your muscles like if you're doing enough adequate you know workload as a beginner on like you know your bench press then there's really no need to do like cable flies for your chest or tricep press that you're going to get more than enough tricep development in that first year just from your bench press you probably won't see that much additional growth but the reason i like throwing these movements in is one you will eventually be adding in isolation or accessory movements of some kind unless you're just like a minimalist trainer for, like the rest of your days and so i think it's good to go ahead and already learn how to properly do the movements kind of already build the basic get stronger on it and then two it's still additional volume. Like even if it's not that much more additional volume, it's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna take away from what you're doing with your big compound movements. It's, it'd be one thing if you were, you know, decide to stupidly replace the bench press with the tricep press down, but doing the tricep press down in addition to the bench press isn't going to hurt you. Um, and it just kind of makes the routine a little bit more fun. You're going into five movements versus just three. So you have your tricep press downs and then your strict barbell curls. So that's gonna be kind of like what your arm isolation is looking like on day one. So that's day one, guys. Now. Going into day two or your secondary day is we're pretty much going to be covering some of the other moves. Like I said, so we've got our, our um, you know, we have our squat base movement, we have our horizontal press, we have our horizontal pull. So now we're going to come in and do our deadlift. It's going to be our hinge base movement. That's going to be, you know, what kind of covers the rest of our legs as far as big, the big primary like leg movements. If it's a squat's really pretty much going to be quad focused, then of course our deadlift is going to be focused on our glutes our hamstrings, as long as really just our entire posterior chain. Like I've already done videos with the deadlift. You guys know it works like, you know, pretty much like 80% of the muscles in the body. Once again, similar to squats, a very big compound movement, very important for building your basic strength. It's gonna help you with like back development, your lower back development, glutes, hamstrings, all that good stuff. Now with the deadlift though, instead of four sets of five, we're actually gonna do three sets of five for the mere fact that I, you, at no point, whether you're a beginner, intermediate or advanced lifter, do you ever really need quite as much volume on the deadlift as what you do with the squats and bench and it's also just a more taxing movement it's hard to recover from especially for beginners so that's why we're only going with three sets of five that's also why you're going to be deadlifting once a week whereas you'll see when we get to day three that you're going to be squatting and bench pressing 
twice a week. But conventional, but shoot, even as you become more intermediate advanced, usually like you're doing your main like compound pull, whether you're pulling conventional or sumo, is pretty much going to, you know, doing it once a week is pretty much going to be adequate. Your secondary day is usually either the opposite variation or something like Romanian deadlifts, and we'll kind of like get to that. But you're only doing like, you know, your true uh, competition style deadlift. Um, once a week, which for uh, our sake, we're putting the conventional. I just feel like everyone should try to learn the conventional first. Um, if you end up going like with sumo for whatever reason, because of things you've read or kind of you just feel like it's better with your morphology, that's cool. But like um, deadlifts is going to be your movement on this day for three sets of five. Then after that, you're going to have um, your overhead press movement. So your um, your vertical press to go along with your horizontal press. And we're going to have that for three sets of five as well. Now, the overhead press isn't so much necessarily like harder to recover from, but since you kind of just did four sets of five on the bench press, I find that like, you know, just having you come in and do three sets of five for the overhead press, um, it's just a little bit better because you've already kind of worked like, you know, the delts a little bit more than what you realize, even though you're working a different type of motion and, you know, you've already worked the pecs and the overhead press can work the pecs a little bit when you come to a dead stop below the chin, everything like that. So you just don't need quite as much volume on that movement on this day because of the fact that what we just hit on the primary day and then keeping in mind that you also still have one more day to come in after you have your rest day after day two. So that's why it's three sets of five. But once again, if you decide that you wanna go with four sets of five on the overhead press, or heck, you wanna do four sets of five on the deadlift, that's at your leisure. That's just simply the little example template, once again, that I'm giving you guys. So overhead press for three sets of five so that you get your um, vertical pressing motion in. It's gonna be really good for developing your, um, your shoulders, helping you get that upper pec work, as well as working the long head of the tricep, which even though you can't isolate the head of the tricep, out of, we know that when it comes to muscle activation, when you're doing your horizontal presses, like, you know, the lateral meter head get pretty good work, but the long head of the tricep just doesn't get quite as much love. But on the overhead press, like, with it actually does get some pretty sufficient love. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, as far as that, and that's also why if, if you said doing like a tricep press down on day one, if you want to do something like a tricep overhead extension, that would actually make a little bit more sense because you're going to get more love to the long head. But once again, just keeping it simplistic. So, um, but back, back to the books on day two. So you have your, um, you have your, your deadlifts three sets of five, your overhead press for three sets of five, and then you're going to have um, your vertical pull. So for the sake of like this template, it's gonna say lat pull downs for three sets of 10. Reason being is that I'm aware that a lot of people as beginners are not able to do pull-ups, they're not able to do very many pull-ups. So they'll do something like, you know, three sets of 10 lat pull downs, uh, something that I know that like whether you're overweight, underweight, somewhere between that most people can actually do and learn the movement. And it's just so that you can work on proper like, you know, elevating and then depressing the scapula, just like how with the horizontal row we're focusing on retraction and protraction. Now, if you are able to do pull-ups, even if you're only able to do like, you know, three to five reps and you want to just, instead of doing lat pull downs, you want to do pull-ups on this day and focus on like just building up to three sets of 10 body weight, you can go for that as well. And then from there, you can just keep either building up the reps or if you want to get a weight of belts where you can add weight to it, then you can do that as well. But for the sake of this template, we're going with lat pull downs. And I'm going to kind of give you some that you guys can do at the end as far as like more calisthenic work too, if you want to get better, like, you know, pull ups, push ups. I'm going to kind of be telling you guys about that stuff towards the end. Anyway, lat pull downs for three sets of 10. So you have your vertical pull to go with your horizontal pull on day one. And then on this day, rather than working on like, you know, arm isolation movements, we're going to be working on uh, more of your leg isolation movement. So we're going to be going with um, your hamstring. So for three sets of 12, lying hamstring curl, or if you want, you can go with the seated hamstring curl as well. But for the this template, I'm going to stop saying it. You guys already know. Okay, so three sets of 12 for lying hamstring curls. And then um, for a little bit more additional quad work, you can do leg extensions for three sets of 12. Now, leg extensions are something that's like very controversial going back and forth. A lot of people say it's not even worth doing. A lot of people say it can be dangerous. Um, on the knees, I personally never had any issues with it. I know a lot of people have never had issues with it, whereas others have. And so for that reason, if it's something where you feel like it just doesn't feel good for the knees or you feel like you're not getting whole, like much out of it, then you can actually end up going with something like um, a dumbbell a dumbbell split squat for just like three sets of 10 to 12 each leg. You can end up going with something like that. It's a little bit more of an advanced move, more complicated move. If you are going to do that, I actually suggest putting that before the lying hamstring curl. But the point is those are going to be like your main little two movements just for a little bit of additional um, leg accessory work. If you even choose to do these, keep that in mind. The compound movements on this guys are what you for sure want to do. The accessory work isn't exactly a requirement, but if you want to go for and get that additional volume in, then you can. And once again, since we're doing um, since like, you know, our legs are kind of getting like, if you think about it in terms of like movements, you're not doing like you have more upper body movements than leg movements. That's why we're doing like three sets of 12 for the leg curls and leg extensions versus just three sets of 10 like we did for the arm work on day one. So that's what your day two looks like. So then day three, final training day of the week, guys, is going to look very similar to day one, but it's going to be a little bit more 
um, higher volume. And the reason I like doing this, guys, is one, I think it's cool for beginners to already kind of get used to working with um, different rep ranges, even though rep ranges in themselves don't matter for like, you know, muscle growth or strength. It's all, of, it's, I mean, well, for strength, for strength, my bad. For strength, they do. Rep ranges do matter for like, you know, for performance, like you're trying to get better at like endurance versus strength. But in terms of hypertrophy, maximizing muscle mass, rep ranges in themselves don't matter. Total workload does. However, I just think it's beneficial to kind of like get people used to working with different rep ranges. So that way, you're kind of not shocked if you end up kind of going more towards, hey, I really want to focus on volume, maximizing hypertrophy, you'll already be used to kind of working with higher reps. So on this day, you come in, you do your squats for three sets of 10, your bench press for three sets of 10, and then you're gonna have um, seated cable rows for three sets of 12. So it's once again a horizontal pull, but instead of it being um, the barbell row for three sets of eight, it's a seated cable row for three sets of 12. Once again, kind of similar for the similar raise that we're focusing on the lat pull down, I just really want people to learn to focus on really fully protracting and retracting. And I feel like the seated cable row is a movement that's really easy to like kind of develop that mind muscle connection and work on doing that without having to um compromise form too much with the bit of a barbell i feel like a lot of beginners like they just start like just swinging the weight up using momentum and i'm not saying that you should ever do that you but you're going to be more inclined to do that as you get fatigued if you're working with higher reps like since a 10 to 12 or something like a barbell row rest with a seated cable row it's a little bit easier to you know maintain and keep form position in my opinion with the higher reps so long as you're like you know using proper weight increments as you go and then your isolation movements on these days guys are going to be more focused Focus on your shoulder girl. So um, lateral raises to work on the lateral heads simply for the mere fact that once again that's pretty much only getting a lot of love when you're doing like your overhead pressing. Um, when you're doing all your pulling and other push, uh, when you're doing your other pushing and pulling movements, you're kind of getting more love to like, you know, the interior head of the delt, the posterior head of the delt, the lateral head just doesn't get quite as much love except on the overhead press. So you get a little bit more workload in it with three sets of 15 on your lateral raises. And then you have face pulls with external rotation, give your rear dust a little bit more love. And it's just a great movement for the overall like upper back and entire shoulder girdle and just for like shoulder health. So face pulls with external rotation for three sets of 15. So you guys kind of see how it is. Kind of have your arm isolations on day one, leg isolations on day two, and then your, um, show you have your uh your shoulder isolations on day three now what you can do at the end of each of these workout guys is like let's say you're somebody where like you're overweight so at the end of your workout you want to focus on cardio that's the time to do it at the end of the workout these workouts really with the way this is set up shouldn't take you much longer than 45 minutes to an hour as far as rest time if you guys watch this channel you already know um the whole myth of like, oh, resting short at least to more gains, it's not true. It's all about resting as long as you need to do the total workload. If you rest for a short amount of time, so you can't complete all the sets and reps that are prescribed to you, that's less workload than if you rest a little bit longer between sets, but you get all four sets of five, all three sets of 10. Now, ideally, um, my rule of thumb uh, for beginners is like, you know, two to five minutes between sets. There's really not a reason you should ever need much more than five minutes, especially as a beginner, to uh, go to the next set. And if you only need as little as two minutes, that's great. But two to five minutes is kind of my ideal rest time between sets on your compound movements. And then for like the isolation movements, since those tend to recover a little bit quicker, if you want to go a little closer, like, you know, a minute and a half to three minutes, you can do that as well. Um, but the point is just resting as long as you need to, to where you feel good to go into the next set, but never more than five minutes on any of the movements, period. Um, but what you can do guys is uh, at the end of, like I said, at the end of the workout, you can do your cardio. If you're like a more overweight individual trying to get you burn some additional calories, you can do your cardio at the end. If you're someone where you really want to focus on like, you know, more direct core work, this is where you do it at the end. I would pick like, you know, one to two core movements of choices. It can be crunches, it can be VS, it can be a weighted crunch, it can be a plank, whatever you're kind of trying to focus on. Um, you can throw in one or two core movements at the end and I leave that up to like, you know, your discretion with what you want to do. Or if you're somebody where you want to get better at things like um, calisthenics and stuff like that, then at the end, you can do like three AM, uh, AM wraps with push-ups. So three sets of as many reps as you can on push-ups and then three sets of as many reps as you can on say like the pull-up or the chin-up. Once again, up to you which one you want to do and just try to build that up over time. You're going to be a little bit spent, obviously, but the reason you do it at the end versus before is because your primary growth is going to be coming from the weight training. So you don't want to kind of like exhaust yourself before you say bench press to your barbell row by doing a bunch of like pull-ups and chin-ups. You're not very good at those yet. Um, so you can do those at the end. Or if you want, if you feel like your work capacity can handle it, you can even do more of your like calisthenic and core work um, on your rest days, like I said, your training days for this will be either Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday. So if on a couple, like your rest day between day one and day two, and your rest day between day two and day three, you want to do some calisthenic work or some more core work, go for it. So long as you're not overexerting yourself to the point where you feel like you're not able to move the lows that you should be on your actual resistance training days. Now, after day three, 
Um, since you're gonna, since you guys can clearly tell already, like for example, you go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then that means you have your rest days, Tuesday and Thursdays. That's when you can do like some of the calisthenic core work. But for the Saturday and Sunday, those two days, you kind of want to just actually like chill out and rest. Or even if you do do some more of that calisthenic and core work, like on say Saturday, make sure you at least have that day before your day one where you're actually just resting. You want one day where you're actually just chilling, resting, um, not doing anything that's gonna like overexert you at all. So that's the way that you want to go about that. Now, as far as how you progress on this, guys, it's the most basic form of progressive overload there is. It's simply linear um, progression. So what you're going to do is for all these days, for all these movements, you're going to like kind of work your way up and build to a weight that you know you can hit for the prescribed sets and reps, whether it's four sets of five, three sets of five, three sets of 10, three sets of 12, whatever the movement is. You're going to start with the weight that you know you can hit for that. And that's what you're going to do on that first day once you get that established is do like, you know, so let's say on squats, you realize, okay, I can do four sets of five with 150 pounds on squats. That's what you're gonna do on day one for week one. Then if you get all four sets of five with 150 pounds, what you're gonna do on day two is go to 155 pounds. So you're just gonna add five pounds to the bar. Same thing with your machine-based work, just add five pounds or go up by the next smallest possible increment, whether it's like a two and a half or five or 10, depending on how the machine is. Um, but with your basic barbell movements, you just want to go up by five pounds, just basically in your progression. So whenever you get all sets of reps, add five pounds to the bar for that same day the following week. Now, obviously, like, you know, your starting weight on Monday, like for four sets of five on squats, if it's 150, you're probably going to start with a lighter starting weight on your day three where you're doing three sets of 10. So maybe you start with 135 on that day. If you get all three sets of 10 with 135, that means on week two, day three, you go to 140 pounds for your three sets of 10, and you simply keep building it up that way. Assuming that you are staying on top of your sleeping, your eating, just your overall recovery, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to progress this way and just build your base foundation for at least like a good year, guys. Like your first year, you should be able to like milk your beginner days this way. Now, if you do, for whatever reason, hit a stall, and when I, hit a, when I say hit a stall, I don't mean that like, oh, I couldn't add weight. Um, Cause let's say that you get four sets of five with like 185 pounds on a movement, and then you try to go to 190, and instead of getting four sets of five, let's say you get five, five, four, three. That's okay, go back to that weight the following week and try to get closer to the progress set some rest. So instead of getting five, five, four, three, let's say you get five, five, um, uh, four, four, that's progression. And then you get five, 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 four, that's progression. And then you eventually get all four sets of five and then you can add weight again. Cool. Keep building up that way. When I say a true stall, I'm talking, you've gone, let's say, um, like two to three weeks where you couldn't increase weight or reps towards prescribed set, um, prescribed reps for each set. If that's the case, do the biological law of accommodation, you know, where you go three weeks and there's no like improvement or increase of any time, you're not actually gaining any strength, you're not actually growing. That's what you're going to want to do. That's a true stall. Simply take whatever weight you were last on, um, multiply it by 90%, see what that weight is, and then do the prescribed sets of reps with that weight and simply build it back up. And when by the time you get back to the weight that you were stuck on, you should be able to push through that with little to no issues. But once again, there's really no issues that you should be stalling um, or not progressing consistently from week to week on this program as a true beginner because you're going to make these adaptations and get really strong really fast unless you're simply not recovering. So the first thing I always want you guys to check is to make sure that you're eating enough as far as recovery and then make sure that you're on top of your sleep. Now, if you're like, you know, in a deficit, caloric deficit because you're trying to lose weight, I understand that. But if you're truly overweight, even in a deficit while losing weight, you should have enough energy for you to still be able to adequately recover from these workouts. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the beginner workout, guys. That's it for the video. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Like I said, I'll have videos in the description down below that kind of answer hopefully most of what the beginner questions are going to be. But yeah, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you're not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do to get better. Like the video, share. 